Is it that you would pay to go see a Sonny Rollins concert or a Herbie Hancock concert or a Wayne Shorter concert? Why is it that so many people have bought Miles Davis's Kind of Blue? Think about it. Is it because they had great technique? I mean, certainly they do have great technique. All of those musicians have phenomenal technique. But is that why you buy their records? I would argue that you would buy their records because of their musical personality. It's as simple as that. They have developed their own musical personalities that are so strong that you would pay to go see them play because they offer something unique that nobody else can. Uh, I think in jazz education, we spend a lot of time on, okay, let's learn a 251, let's learn this mode and this scale, let's learn this lick. And I think those things are all really good and helpful. But at the end of the day, what do you want to be as a player? Do you want to be someone who can regurgitate a bunch of licks and patterns and uh, stuff? Or do you want to have a musical personality that you can offer people? I know for me, I, I would want to have a musical personality. That's kind of the point. And um, that doesn't mean we shouldn't practice technique. I practice technique regularly. I'm not anti-technique, and I'm not anti-practicing licks and patterns. I'm not anti-transcribing. In fact, I do all of those things regularly, and those things are, are crucial for our jazz musicians and uh, contemporary musicians. But playing with personality, that's something that takes a long time to develop it takes a lifetime, and you're always developing your musical personality whenever you play. So I'm going to just talk about that a little bit today. Um, the, the tune that I played for you at the beginning of this segment was Cherokee. I was improvising over Cherokee. And the reason I chose to use that tune is because I'm currently in the middle of transcribing a Sonny Stitt solo on Cherokee. And when we transcribe a solo... The point isn't to just do it and then just move on. It's You want to dig in. Dig into the phrasing. You don't want to just get the notes and rhythms. You want to get the phrasing and how do they play each note? How do they play each phrase? How do they articulate? What is their tone quality like? Um, do they have a darker or a brighter sound? Is it subdued or edgy? We're listening for these kind of vague artistic characteristics that are hard to put into words, but... Nonetheless, they are super important. All right, so let me just play a little bit over Cherokee, and I'm going to just demonstrate what it might sound like if I were to play all the right notes, but with really not much personality. <laughs> choice there I don't think I just think it's not that interesting the way that I played that had no personality and I was doing that intentionally so now I'm going to play a little bit over this tune and I'm going to put more personality into it and then we'll talk about what does that mean <laughs> Okay, 
All right, so I hope that you agree with me that that's a lot more interesting, okay? And it's, it's just the little subtle things I'm doing in my phrasing that really help that. I got to a point in my learning process when I would play these gigs, uh, jazz standards gigs, and I would, I would be playing these tunes and I would be thinking, you know, why am I not happy with the way I'm playing over these tunes? I sh technically, I'm playing a lot of the right notes. And then I realized it's not about only the notes that you choose. It's about the phrasing. And that's why a guy like Miles Davis could play two notes and it would just be the most beautiful thing in the world. He doesn't need to play a hundred thousand licks and notes to make meaningful music. Um, so this is something I started to think about. There's a lot that goes into musical personality, time feel, tone quality, note choice, use of space, creative development within a solo, articulation. There's a lot of different things. Let me demonstrate a little bit what I'm thinking about. So when I'm playing this bop sort of style, I'm thinking about having a really loose swing feel that's almost straight, but just a little bit swung. And I'm articulating the off beats. Do, da, 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 da. And that is sort of the default bop articulation for, uh, at least for horn players, um, because it gives you a little push on the offbeat. Tone quality, I can play that two different ways. That's more of a aggressive forward sound. More of a subdued, subtoned quality to it. You could play it legato, or you could play it staccato. <laughs> kind of corny sounding, but maybe you use it for comedic effect, or, or maybe it's appropriate for the song you're playing. Who knows? And each instrument presents different ways of expressing these things, but on a wind instrument like sax, you have the potential to bend notes, so... <laughs> So you can bend notes. Um, you have alternate fingerings that might change the, the tone quality or the tone color, the timbre of the note. So two different fingerings for the same note. A lot of the great saxophone players use that technique. Lester Young was famous for doing that kind of thing. Use space in your solo. I like how that feels to play with more space. Fall offs. Or, um, the opposite, whatever you call that, like a rip up, little grace notes before a note. Trills. I think just thinking about putting more personality into your playing will help and then just practicing things different ways. So the lesson here is work on putting personality into your playing. I guarantee you people will want to listen to you more. All right, we'll see you next time. Take care.